Hey guys, if you haven't followed my previous videos, basically I was just casually changing my spark plugs and I just wanted to take a peek at the piston heads with the bore scope and I discovered heavy carbon buildup. Since this is a GDI engine car that sprays fuel directly into the piston chamber, no fuel is sprayed to the intake valves to keep them clean, like in port injection cars. Though I wasn't surprised, my worry on heavy carbon buildup on intake valves was confirmed and I'm going to cover the steps I've taken to clean the carbon on intake valves. However, to get to this cleaning step, you may want to watch previous videos on how to remove the spark plugs, how to remove the throttle body, how to remove the intake manifold, how to locate broken Lexus Toyota wire connector part numbers, and how to replace just the broken connector housing. All right, so let's look at uh, all the things that you might need. Get some gloves, get some flashlight. Uh, this, I can wear it on my head and uh, that's actually pretty convenient. This is the uh, that five millimeter hex socket that I bought. I think I bought this uh, seven piece set. I think it was around 10 bucks at Lowe's. And I have the bore scope at the end. It has a light, so I actually I can put it into the spark plug hole or the, uh, the intake valve chamber and get a, a better close-up view. I bought this set of Harbor Freight. I think it was under 20, around 20 bucks or so. It comes with the, uh, the plastic or nylon and brass and uh, iron uh, brushes. And it also comes with this long extension handle and you're gonna need all of it because you're going in there uh, pretty deeply and it's nice because it's a quick uh, release here. Uh, you're gonna need a funnel to pour in uh, some cleaning solutions. And you're gonna need a, a, a long screwdriver like this. This wasn't long enough. So I went and got another, another one. Uh, you're gonna need a lot of rags, paper towels. Get a garbage can because look at the amount of, I think I used almost the whole roll of paper towels. And here's some of the cleaning solutions I was using. I showed you guys the very nice chem dip. Here's a sea foam, a couple of different uh, brake cleaner. This one says it's not chlorinated. This was like, actually expensive. It was like 10, 12 bucks. This is like a couple bucks. And get a uh, some kind of spray bottle that you can uh, pour some of this in here. That way you can spray um, more easily. Got some uh, brushes. Uh, I even have steel wool. It helps if you got a shop vac. At the end, what I did was uh, I rigged it so this is the extension that comes off. I duct taped a uh, long plastic hose. I had to get a, a small one so that it could actually fit into the spark plug hole as well. And I tried both configuration. This one I used it with the uh, long thin uh, metal uh, pipe. For spark plug hole I had to use this. Um, also note that I cut the end in a slightly tapered angle. Uh, that way um, I can try to get some of the fluid that's formed on the uh, edge. This one, uh, when you tape it like this, it helps a little bit to maneuver the, uh, uh, the end of the, uh, the hose a little bit so you can get all the, the edges. Um, this is an important one. This is the long stick. What I'm doing is I'm putting it right through the uh, spark plug hole and that's helping me to measure the, uh, the top dead center so that I know when the uh, intake valves are closed. You wanna get some uh, rags or something and always cover up. Okay, this is the side that I finished. You know, as you clean this, you're gonna get a lot of splatter of the, the cleaning solution. So I didn't want all of that to go in there. And I even cover the other holes that I'm not cleaning as well. By the way, <clears throat> when I was taking out the spark plugs, I noticed some of the spark plugs were wet with oil. Actually, those were the cylinders where the, on the intake valves where I saw the more heavier uh, carbon deposits. So, you know, since I got bulk of the, the, the things removed, so I'm probably gonna also redo the, uh, the valve cover gaskets, including the, uh, the tube gasket for the, the cylinder. You know, that there's the fuel injector rail right there. I don't know if I wanna uh, take that out and clean 
fill injectors as well. I'm, I'm still debating. Okay, so this is the bottom side of the intake manifold. I'm gonna replace the gaskets, but I would say the gaskets held up well. You can see there's no oil leaking past the gaskets. So that's why I wasn't seeing any oil leak. So this is good, but look at that. Oh my God, look at that. I mean, it's, look at that. At least it's soft. So this platinum cover is not as bad because it's accessible. I'm using the chem dip. Put some in the <laughs> Windex bottle here. This doesn't look like it's gonna come apart. It's uh, this black plastic is one piece, so I'm just gonna clean it uh, as much as I can. Let me see how far. <laughs> I'm not even sure you need the spray on this one because it's it's just coming off so easily here. Actually, I wonder if this comes out. Oh, it does. All right, I'm gonna use this long rag here, my brush. So it's not as bad. So I think it's pretty clean. I'm gonna leave the gasket in there for now uh, until I'm ready to uh, put this back. Uh, that's when I'm gonna take out the gasket and then the, clean the, the gasket area. All right, I'm gonna clean the, this is the lower intake. As you can see, there's a lot of buildup. So I'm gonna clean that. I'm gonna use the uh, Berry Man's Chem Dip and I just put it into this uh, Windex bottle. What's a little surprising is how dark the solution is. I thought it would be more clear. So anyway, this is not dirty. This is actually brand new. So I got my toothbrush, some old rags. We'll see how much effort it will take to take this off. Hmm, I was expecting major struggle, but wow, actually this is very soft. Very soft, doesn't take much effort. I wouldn't say it's like baked on there, it's just just collected on there. It's uh it's coming off with not much effort so far. So this one is a little bit harder, but not by much. So the first step is to scrape off as much carbon off the flaps using a flathead screwdriver and a toothbrush. This will knock off about 70-80% off the carbon buildup. Afterwards, we'll come back with a cleaning solution and do more deep scrubbing to clean it more thoroughly. Now I'm gonna spray some Dairy Man's Chem Dip on the side that I just cleaned and let that soak for a while while I clean the other dirty side. Oh, by the way, this chemical is supposed to be harsh, so wear a glove and maybe even a protective eyewear so it doesn't splatter into the eyes as you scrub with the brush. So just repeat the step of soaking and brush cleaning. Whenever I wanted to check how clean it is, I used a brake cleaner spray as it washes off all the dirty junk. And I just bought a, a hot steam cleaner. So I tried that as well. And it helped some to wash off the gunk, but it's not necessary as brake cleaner does a better job with less hassle. Oh, by the way, don't get too tired out of this uh, easy work because the really big scrubbing labor comes when we get to the intake valves. Haha. <laughs> also, don't forget to clean the manifold runner area in the same manner. We're not gonna get to 100% clean shine, but the main objective is to clean off any carbon buildup as much as we can without exerting tremendous amount of effort. Cleaning both upper and lower intake manifolds probably took a little more than an hour, and I think they turned out really nice. On the intake stroke, the piston moves down and intake valves open. This creates low pressure in the combustion chamber and draws the air in. On the compression stroke, the piston moves up and intake valves close. And just before the top dead center position, the direct injection fuel is sprayed. 
On the power stroke, spark plug ignites compressed fuel air mixture and forces piston downward and intake valves remain closed. On the exhaust stroke, the intake valves remain closed and the exhaust valves open and piston moves back up which expels exhaust gas out of the combustion chamber. Therefore, the best time to catch the intake valves in closed position for a given piston is on the power and exhaust strokes. If you pour cleaning solution on intake stroke, the cleaning solution will all leak to the combustion chamber. Worse yet, all the carbon debris that you loosen and clean will also fall on top of the piston. That said, this is theoretically easier said than done. With the black carbon coating the entire intake valves, it's kind of tricky to clearly determine if the valve is completely closed or partially open. Also, it's not easy to tell which of the four strokes the piston is in. So I decided to find the TDC or top dead center for the piston because at TDC, the intake valves are always closed. So you can get one of these sticks for a buck or two at a hardware store. And this is thin enough to fit in through the spark plug hole. And what I'm doing is so as you rotate the crankshaft clockwise, what's gonna happen is the piston's gonna go up and down, right? So what I did was uh, I kept uh, rotating the crankshaft until the stick wouldn't come up anymore. And then I marked that position with the red marking there. So that's the top dead position. And then same thing, I kept rotating the uh, crankshaft until it wouldn't go down further. And that was the bottom dead center. Okay, and then I used those markings to go to the other spark plug holes and then I would turn the crankshaft until uh, it would reach the, uh, the top dead center. And the crankshaft is in there. And let me see what socket that was. So that's a 22 millimeter. So you're gonna go in there like this from here and you're not gonna get a lot of room. So you'll get, uh, you know, maybe a little less than a quarter turn each time. They do have a tool to measure the top dead center more accurately. I just don't have one handy right now, so I'll just kind of improvise that. If you have borescope camera, what you can do is pour some cleaning solution in there and watch it uh, from the, uh, the spark plug hole with the borescope and see if the chemical is uh, uh, dripping in. Okay, so it takes a little bit of effort. Using the borescope, I try to look at the intake valves directly and and see if the, the valves are actually closed. But this is actually very, very difficult because everything inside is all dark and it's very, very difficult to see if the valves are closed or not. Let me share with you a few trial and error experiences so that you don't have to experiment and can quickly clean the carbon. I started with cylinder one and set the TDC or top dead center. For this 3GR FSE 3.0 liter engine, the distance between the top of the piston at top dead center position to the top edge of the spark plug hole entry measured at seven and seven eighth inches or 200 millimeter. And in the similar fashion, the bottom dead center measured at 11 and 3 16 inches or 284 millimeter. Since this is not measured by super accurate device, it can be slightly off, but it'll give you a very close idea as to where to get started. And I tried using the borescope to verify if the intake valves are closed, but with heavy black carbon everywhere, this was not possible. So I just poured about half inch of chem dip onto the intake valves and then quickly use the borescope through the spark plug hole to see if it's leaking to the pistons uh, for a few minutes. As mentioned before, possibly confirming the full closure of intake valves are important for a few reasons. First, we don't want all the carbon debris that we scrub off to fall on top of the piston. The objective is to remove the carbon and not pass it on to another location. Second, if you get sufficient amount of liquid onto the combustion chamber, and you start the engine that way, you risk hydro locking the engine. If you're not familiar with hydro locking, please go read up on how deadly it can be to an engine. This is very important. Third, 
You don't want to pass the carbon to the piston because that carbon will eventually get passed to the catalytic converter, which will damage or reduce the life of expensive catalytic converter. Once I was certain the intake valves are closed, I filled the intake chamber with a uh, chem dip to about half inch from the top. Not knowing how long to soak, I let it soak for about 2-3 hours while hoping for carbon to literally melt into jelly and or liquid form like what some YouTubers suggested. Since the chem dip is dark in color, I couldn't see what was happening, so I just started to scrub everywhere with a brush. One lesson here is that I started with a nylon brush because I was concerned that maybe the brass and steel brushes may be too harsh and could scratch the metal surface. Nylon brush was somewhat adequate to remove the carbons off the intake chamber walls, but it was too soft to scrub the hard baked on carbon on intake valve top and the stem. Periodically, I vacuumed out the dirty solution and debris to check on the status of the cleaning and then poured a little bit of fresh solution just to cover the exposed intake valve and repeated the cleaning process probably about a half dozen times. I also found that flathead screwdriver was very effective at scraping off hardened carbon spots. I rotated between brush and screwdriver. After a couple hours, my back was straining from bending over 90 degrees to do the cleaning and I started to wonder, dang, maybe I should have just paid to get walnut blasted. <laughs> After a break, I realized that I can't continue at this pace, so I got bold to use the brass brush. Yes. And brass brush definitely was more effective than nylon brush by at least 10 times, I think. I'm not gonna lie, it probably took about 3 hours to finish the first two intake valves for the first piston, mainly because I was being careful not to screw up things, and I was experimenting to find the most effective cleaning steps. For piston 2, after becoming cocky to hit the TDC on piston 1 on the first attempt, <clears throat> I didn't even bother to confirm that the intake valves were fully closed by just pouring in small amount of solution onto intake valves and then quickly checking with the borescope to see if anything is leaking on the piston heads. If you look at my red TDC line, it should have come up another 3 16th to quarter inch higher and this is what left the intake valve slightly open. I was gung-ho and I just filled the intake chamber with the cleaning solution and I immediately noticed that fluid level was going down. Oh no, oh crap! I quickly picked at the spark plug hole and the cleaning solution level was already over the spark plug hole. Uh oh, dang. This is why you, you want to go slow and ensure that you hit the TDC. I panicked for a moment, but I managed to calm myself into believing that, hey, I can just vacuum that out and I won't start the engine until piston top is mostly dry. Besides, the piston heads had heavy carbon buildup too, so I decided to let the cam dip soak overnight, hoping that it'll soften heavy carbon on intake valves uh, more than two hours of soaking and that it might also loosen the carbon on piston heads without scrubbing because it's not easy to get some kind of a cleaning brush through the spark plug hole and be able to move it around to clean the carbon. So the next day the combustion chamber was still completely filled with the cleaning solution and you guys just saw me vacuum all that out. Now let's go have a look at what 10 hours of chem dip soaking did to the cylinder head. Hmm, you guys see the difference? The first difference that I noticed is in the before video, the carbon looks dry and appeared to be caked on to the piston head. But in the after video, looks like the carbon is uh, slightly wet and loose. In fact, I stuck a long metal stick through the spark plug hole and just lightly scraped on the piston top and confirmed that the carbon is now soft. The second difference in the before video, the piston top and the wall was nearly all black, but in the after video, we can actually start to see some of the piston head and even the side walls. I'll have more updates on the piston head carbon cleaning in the next video, but for now, let's resume the intake valve cleaning. As I cleaned the remaining intake valves, here's what I found to work the best for me. First, let me share some important things that I learned. Even overnight soaking doesn't fully soften the caked on carbon on the intake valves. Therefore, 70% of my time was actually spent on scraping off caked on carbon on top of the intake valve and the stem. Unless you have a long pick, it's difficult to get to the carbon that's wedged on the sloped valve edge. 
carbon on the intake chamber wall comes off relatively easily by just brushing it with or without any cleaning solution. You also need a good flashlight that can point into a narrow space in the intake chamber. For me, the borescope light and headlamp really worked well. Steel brush worked better than the brass and nylon brushes and I didn't see any deep scratches or damages to the intake valve or the wall. The brass brush is still useful but the nylon brush is just too soft. You do want to switch between different brush sizes. For the side wall and large openings, use a medium sized steel brush. For tight space and behind the intake valve stem, use a thin steel brush. Shop vac is nearly a must as it can quickly suck out dirty cleaning solution and remaining residue but you'll need to attach a 38 inch diameter clear plastic hose to be able to go deep into the intake chamber. Also, if you happen to leak any cleaning solution into the piston chamber like I did, you can just vacuum it out. I lightly sprayed the brake cleaner as the final lead and then used clean paper towel to wipe off remaining residue that vacuum didn't pick up. I repeated the cycle of scraping, brushing, soaking, and vacuuming at least five, six, seven times for each intake valve just to remove about 90 to 95 percent of carbon. Overall, I probably would have spent about $200 on gaskets, connectors, cleaning solutions, uh, the oil change, cleaning brushes, 5 millimeter hex socket, and other supplies. But I think it was well worth it to clean the 113k miles of carbon accumulation. I did a lot of studying before tackling this work and I tried to cover all the key points in detail to save you time and to set you up for more speedier success. Thanks for watching and if this video was helpful please like and subscribe and I'll have updated video on the piston head carbon cleaning before end of the year. I hope you guys are enjoying the end of the year break and I wish you guys all the best in 2022. Take care and I'll see you guys soon.